Yeah, levodopa was the pivotal moment in the development of therapeutics in Parkinson's disease. It changed the whole landscape of treatment because it's the first rational treatment for Parkinson's disease, trying to replenish the dopamine stores that are d diminished in Parkinson's disease. So that hasn't changed even though it started in the 60s we still have levodopa as the gold standard of treatment of parkinson's disease levodopa has several limitations short half-life and development of motor complications like fluctuations and dyskinesias so the whole a field of research in the treatment of parkinson's disease revolves around improving levodopa treatment by changing the delivery methods, but changing and prolonging the half-life of the drug, complementing with other drugs that uh, avoid these complications like amantadine, the COMT inhibitors, the MAOB inhibitors, and the dopamine agonists. But levodopa still remains as the major treatment of Parkinson's disease. And nowadays, the field is evolving to very sophisticated ways of delivering levodopa, like mini pumps, or pills that have a prolonged half-life, they are controlled release formulations, uh, uh, subdermal administration via patches. And so levodopa will remain as the mainstay of treatment of Parkinson's disease. And we do not envision in the future anything that will replace levodopa. We have to improve the way of delivering levodopa and avoiding motor complications, but not replacing levodopa. The whole change in the treatment of Parkinson's disease is not in the symptomatic field, but in the disease-modifying treatments. So we are evolving into a different stage in the way we treat our patients, not only modifying the symptoms, but trying to modify the progression of the disease, either by preventing, slowing, stopping, or reversing the disease. Those are all disease-modifying treatments. The major obstacle for disease-modifying treatments is, first of all, if we want to prevent the disease, we need to have biomarkers that identify the disease at a very early stage, either at the risk phase or at the prodromal stage, where non-motor symptoms predominate, like uh, RBD, REM behavior disorder, which is a sleep disorder that it's very common in Parkinson's disease, olfactory deficits, depression, constipation, autonomic symptoms. If we can identify the disease at a very early stage, it is possible to institute disease-modifying treatments. The other major problem or hurdle that we have to overcome is the fact that even though we call Parkinson's disease a single disease entity, it is not a single disease entity. Parkinson's disease is a heterogeneous disorder and people develop the pathology through different molecular cascades and mechanisms. So another way of perfecting our treatment is to identify that heterogeneity by identifying the molecular cascades involved in every single or individual patient. And that leads us to personalized medicine or precision medicine, in which we identify this is a genetic disorder, does the patient carry a single mutation that is a monogenic form of Parkinson's disease? Do they have predominantly problems with oxidation and mitochondrial function? Do they have problems with the protein clearance machinery? Do they have problems with reactive oxygen species? And so on and so forth. So there are many, many, many molecular mechanisms involved in each individual patient. So we have to identify those in order to adapt the treatment to that particular type of Parkinson's disease.